Coached by Rhonda Funkhauser, assisted by Kevin Keffer and JV coach Marsha Addison. The 1981 Class AA state champion Claymont girls basketball team finished the season with a 26-1 record. The Mustangs began tournament play with wins, wins over Ridgewood and Toronto before defeating St. Clairsville to claim the district championship. A double overtime regional semifinal win over Riverview, followed by a victory over Marion Pleasant, put Claymont into the state final four. A 50-37 state semifinal win over Columbus Bishop Hartley, and a 52-45 victory over Canton Central Catholic earned the Mustangs the Class AA state championship. Not with us tonight are Lynn Smith, Renee Smith, and the late Leslie Shelley Mulroy. With us tonight, sophomore Kathy Johnson Hunka, junior Debbie Reed Anastasiatis, junior Tammy Gribben McMillan, Junior Mitzi Dryden. Senior Natalie Cotton Colliner. Accepting the honor for senior Cynthia Carter Jackson, who could not be with us tonight. Her daughter Chantel. Senior Becky Hillier. Senior Teresa Castor Patterson. JV coach, Marsha Addison. Varsity assistant coach, Kevin Keffer. Head coach, Rhonda Funkhauser. Please welcome into the Tuscarawas County Sports Hall of Fame, the 1981 Class AA state champion, Claymont girls basketball team. You know, I think I should just have Charlie come up here because he was at all these uh, tournament games. <laughs> okay, first of all, I would definitely like to thank everyone and congratulate everyone, um, Jim Carruthers especially, and all the members of the uh, Tuscarawas County Hall of Fame. Um, it's a great honor. I would especially like to also thank the Claymont community um, they treated us like queens, let me tell you. Uh, special thanks, all the parents. I, I just, I can't tell you how important that is, and those of you who have been there know, know how important it is. Um, and I love being able to still call these guys kids. You know, I, I just, <laughs> we just had our 40th anniversary, and it's just, it's, it's so much fun to just say kids and, and then look at them now, and I'm like, what a great group. Um, just a little bit about the 80-81 season. Um, that was actually less than 10 years ago, um, less, less than 10 years after Title IX was enacted. Title IX was enacted um, to promote girls' sports, and not just at the high school level, mostly it started at the college level, and that was in 1972. So it was not even 10 years, this was 1981, um, after that was enacted. Uh, we are currently celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX. For those of you that watch any of the women's sports going on right now, it's, you can see it's being um, celebrated everywhere. Um, back to basketball. In 1981, we were playing with a 29 and a half inch basketball. Um, we, girls high school currently plays with a smaller ball, which is 28 and a half inches in circumference. Um, the, the 29 and a half inch ball um, is currently used in boys high school, boys co or men's college, and the NBA. Um, we were playing with it back then. Um, there was no three point shot. I know a lot of you guys remember that. Um, there were no alternating possessions. Every held ball was a jump ball. Um, so those are just some of the, uh, the differences. We practiced every Tuesday and Friday, we practiced with our freshman boys. And that forced us to make bounce passes, give ball fakes, physically box out, because believe me, if we could box them out, we could box out any girls team. Um, 
So in addition to our other practices, like I said, every Tuesday and Friday, I could just say, okay, hey, we want to see an air, airplane press, or um, yeah, we need to work on, on our box press or our run and jump. I could just say that and they could do it. Or they could just say it and we could do it and it was, they were so much stronger than us, but we got so much better. Um, so that's just something that we did. Um, during this, the season prior to this, we ran into a couple teams who were just as big and just as fast as we were. Um, we had two kids, Cynthia and Becky, over, over six foot, and one was left-handed and one was right-handed, a lot of high-low. Um, it, it was a luxury, especially in girls' basketball. And, um, but, like I said, we, we had five losses when, when uh, the season before this. So we upgraded our, our schedule, and we had five teams in addition to us who were ranked, and we got a lot better. Um, we didn't fast break at all. These kids, from the time they were in junior high, would get a rebound, make a baseball pass, and score a layup. I mean, it, it, it was just what they did. We were big, they were bigger than everybody else, and so when we got to the season before this, when we ran into teams that were just as big and just as fast as us, we didn't always have an answer. So during this season, we did not allow a fast break down the court, right? I mean, we, we walked the ball up the floor every single possession. And guess what? All of a sudden, against those good teams, we could compete because we could play different speeds. Um, that was the biggest adjustment back then. Um, until we got to the state tournament. And in the state tournament, um, during the final game against Canton Central Catholic, we reverted back to the old baseball pass layup. I loved it. You know, because it was a, a complete change of pace. No one's seen us do that that entire season. And, um, well, it, it ended up in a state title. So, um, also during that season, a uh, couple quick things. We made, like, at least a half dozen half-court shots. Now, you don't have a lot of those in girls' basketball. Um, but this group... We had at least a half dozen of them during the season, and then during tournaments, Teresa Castor made two. She made one in St. John, John's Arena in the state tournament, and then she made one in a very important regional semifinal game. At the halftime buzzer, she threw up a half-court shot. It went through nothing but net. We were playing Riverview. We were number one in the state. They were number two in the state. Great team, great coach, great game. I can't say it was the prettiest game, but it was a, a fun game. Um, <laughs> okay, Charlie, not to take away from you or anything here, but I can just ima I can just hear you saying everything on you know, as I, as I watch the tapes of that. We're down, we're tied at the end of regulation. We go into the first overtime, we're still tied. We go into the second overtime. There's 11 seconds on the clock. Riverview's shooting two free throws at their end. They miss the first one. They take everybody off, off, the, uh, off the lane, take them back to half court. 11 seconds on the clock still. We have a play that we have practiced every single, at the end of every single practice all year. It's, we practiced it from ha the half court. We practiced it from our baseline. We practiced it from their baseline. We've been all over the different places during the dead ball. Where are we going to throw the ball when we have to have a shot? Well, there was no timeout. They also missed the second shot. Cynthia gets a rebound, outlets it. Tammy takes it down. Honest to God, everybody went to the right spots. In transition, it, it, like I, we couldn't have drawn it up. Now, we had different people going to different spots, but they all knew the spots that we had to fill. Took it down to the baseline. Tammy took it down to the baseline. Reversed to Cynthia. Cynthia sends it opposite side baseline. Natalie Cotton calling her. Nice, soft, 
two hands set shot, nothing but net, right? <laughs> and <laughs> you got it, Charlie. <laughs> so anyway, it just I, I can't thank you enough for this group. Um, we're the youngest team to be here. We are very pleased to be the first girls team um, in Tuscaroras County to win a, a state basketball title. And I hope there's a lot more because I hope everyone gets that kind of experience. Um, thank you. Congratulations to everyone. And I think we're the last act of the night. Thank you very much. Thank you.